And Kevin said, I'm doing a charity for a nun, will you show up? And say hi, and here this is. So I really like a Mark Twain novel, like I talked into this, but the best of fiends, I'm here. Hello to everybody. Give it up. Have a seat. I'm, I'm gonna sit here, okay. All right, first question for you guys, and something you both said to me separately, so. And I wanna f tell everybody, I've yeah. known him uh, since. 30 years. I, I had him over at my house after I got fired from ABC. That was uh, 23 years ago. So I've known this man, I wanted to bring him out tonight, so. It's good to be here. Thank you, and, I love and, the and, shades. And before we start any shenanigans, I wanna say the one thing that we have in common is, is that. So we, we were brutal enemies fighting, and uh, it wasn't it wasn't fake like wrestling or something. We were we were we were enemies. Oh yeah. But but we're both we're both God guys. Uh, he's a he's into the Virgin Mary and all this, which I don't quite understand because I wasn't raised with that. But uh, I think he's a great man of God. Have you have any of you read the Broken Mary story? Thank you very much. So that's really what we sit and talk about. I will say that I think Kevin is a big phony in one way, and that is. Brandmeier and Dahl, they hated his guts, and he hated them. No, I didn't. No. Oh, come on. I, ha hated, hated. We hated each other. And he says, oh, well, Dr. Johnny, uh, Johnny was a shitty Huey Lewis impersonator. Dahl was the laziest piece of shit I ever met. And you stick up for these guys. Anyway, that's it. But other than that, he's a genuine anyway. He's a very nice guy. Yes, first question. So first question. So Kevin said, because you were fiends, you were the best fiends, but you were yes. also rivals. Yes. He said he knew why Jimmy DeCastro brought you into town is because, you know, some people, they get settled in their job, they need a little fire lit under their ass, and they thought bringing you to Chicago creatively would do that. And then Kevin said, uh, you said about Kevin that he's one of the most creative people on radio. So yeah. there's compliments that you never shared with each other, yeah. but you I think, he's, I think he's certifiably insane. Which a lot of geniuses are. I think he's an insane guy. He said to me tonight, he goes, do you want me to bring a sock and you can talk to Jimmy Shorts? I said, I'll kill you. Jim, uh, Chips oh, in no. the green room. Oh, no. And I just wanted to say that my voice coach, Helen Keller, <laughs> uh, now we go back. And I... They, they bought it. I have the number one show in San Francisco, Oakland, and San Jose. They had spent $197 million on a station called KML. They couldn't beat me. That's the truth. They just needed to put me somewhere. They had a loser station called The Blaze that nobody was listening to. Yeah, that and was they said, horrible. we'll put you there, you'll play eight songs an hour, you don't have to work, and we'll give you $3 million a year. I was making $70,000 a year. My dad was dying of cancer in, in Kansas City. The flights were killing me. So that's how I ended up in Chicago. You made 70000 A yeah. show? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, why, I wanted to ask you, why didn't you call your followers calves? Did I do? That is. Well, Stern's big thing was, you know, what was it, man bull or man sheep? Or, oh, oh, it's so funny. I don't know. So weak. Did any of you guys see the Vice special? Yeah. Yeah, one person. <laughs> I learned a lot of stuff about that. My battle with Stern, and by the way, he never beat us. We should make that very clear. We, we really beat him quite uh, soundly. And I never got that either. And that wasn't, a Chicago, that wasn't a Chicago thing, man. That was not a Chicago thing. And they say on this Vice, it's on Vice, it's called Dark Side of the 90s. And uh, I never heard the show. I still never heard the show. And, but his crew is on there, uh, Baba Booey and, and Stutter John and uh, uh, Jackie the Joke Man, all these people. I know the names, but I never listened to the show. And, and uh, they said, they went, the first day, Stern in Chicago went after my father, who was dying of cancer, talked about how he was going to rape the corpse and use um, my mother's saliva on his, to rape, to rape me, and all this, and Chicago went, no. And, and the whole crew, the whole staff says on TV, I never knew this, they said, we, we looked at each other, we just lost Chicago, and they did. And, and a New York audience is different, and a Stern audience is different from one of our audiences, one of our people, one of, one of you people, is work class is half full kind of people. Right. And I always found his people gloom and doom, and, and neg real negative people, anyway. I just had to go home and babysit Trev. <laughs> That's all I had to do. Kev, I got another one for you here. Yes. So these voices, Jimmy Shores, everybody you had, 
two uh, two part question. First of all, two part question. Two part. I know. I'll stop doing slow. So can we show this the video again of Fred Zeppelin? <laughs> Ed Zeppelin, not no, Ed Red Zeppelin. Zeppelin. I'm sorry. It's Red Skelton. All right. Okay. So, um, yes. with, the, with the voices that you're doing, did you ever really, did you like feel that your personal life became that person? Did you like order pizzas and Jimmy Short's voice? And the second part of the question is, um, did you ever have a voice or a character that never made it to your show? No, they all did. They they had to come through me, and I. Stamped them all. I used to, when I was a little kid, I grew up in Pontiac, Michigan, and I'm literally, I, Kennedy is still president. I'm in diapers. My dad would have friends over outside Pontiac, Michigan, outside Detroit. And he'd say, and he'd talk like this, Kevin, get out here, you little son of a bitch, get out here. And I'd come out, and he'd just, do, do that trick you do. And I'd, I'd walk, I'd get on my toes, and curl my toes and, impre and impersonate the president. Isn't he a little funny? Go get me another beer, son of a bitch. <laughs> so it started then. Are you saying JFK? Yeah. How I mean, old are you? I love you, yeah. Well, I was <laughs> little. I was in diapers and I saw Kennedy and Oswald <laughs> get their heads blown. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I, mean, I saw how tight the loop shirts were in a few walkers, but this crowd must be. <laughs> Talking about JFK? Oh, I, 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 I was three or four. Okay, all right. Kyle, oh, now you, you said, uh, Kyle, you said, I just heard 27. What's 27. the next question? Yeah. You said you would hear Kevin in the hallways just talking I said, what? To oh, no, I thought he, I mean, uh, yes. The he, genius. Well, thing. he's working out stuff before he goes in the air. So he's, you know, I, I don't know him. I haven't heard his show. I'm coming in from another place, and he's walking down the hall. What? Shut up, you butt nut. <laughs> what is, what, he's insane. And that was before, you know, earphones and earpods, and yeah. he just was, he would talk, talk to his characters in the hall, and it was batshit crazy. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. It, okay. took, it took over. It took yes. you over, right? Well, I want to, because I've known your wife. Your wife is an absolute... What do you mean you've known my wife? I've known your wife. We all know your wife. I mean in the biblical sense. Since she likes sleeping started. with radio guys, I know this. How did you meet her? Was she... Oh, she was... I was buried family. alive outside the, uh, the, uh, the Excalibur. Oh, oh I remember days. that. And she was in a... She came to do a documentary and filmed me coming out of the oh, grave. Right. And I really did it. It was really awful. Yes. Oh, um, I have a question for you, Mr. Man Cow. Yes. So... You've been like uh, a dick to a lot of people. <laughs> but, in <a> way, <laughs> but my question is, I mean, you, I'm, oh, I, all I, don't aside, I mean, you have, you know, you, I've seen you. This like, coming from the man that looks like the Crypt Keeper when he was alive. I know. <laughs> I've seen it. No, but my point is, did yes. you ever do it? Like, I've seen you in your studio, and you're yeah. like, you've lost it on some people, but did that ever happen where you kind of actually felt bad? Like, damn, you know, I really feel like you shouldn't have done it. All the time. Really? All the time. Every, almost every day. But I was not there for you, and I was not there for, for the, the caller. And, you know, these comedians would come in and say, Kevin, you remember this. I don't want to do my show for you. I, I'm going to do it tonight. Well, there's two million people listening. Do it, do it, do it now, do the good stuff now. So it was an amplified version of myself, and you know, it was not for, it was for the people in the car. So I don't care about your feelings, you're boring, do something. Right, I, I've seen yeah. that, when, the, when it was boring or something, you would do anything to get. If, if, I, if I was, that was the rule, if I was bored, you're off, it's over. And the show was very fast paced, and I think a very exciting show. Anyway, next, yeah. All right. You have so, your, <laughs> he did his part too. Yeah, all right, so. I'd like you to share the story about, first of all, your friendship with Chris Farley. Yeah. And that overnight that you hit the Hancock. You guys want to hear about Chris Farley? Yeah. You want to, do you want to roll the video? Yeah, uh, you know what? I really want to hear about Chris. This is probably my favorite thing about you that I stumbled upon. We have a video. You got to tell us how this whole thing happened. Rich? This is him undressing, and then you'll, okay. Well, we could just talk about Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you yeah. make that what, happen. What did, well, it'll, it'll come up. Uh, he, lived, he lived in the building where we broadcast the Merchandise Mart, as did Jerry Springer, so we would see them quite frequently. And uh, he, would, uh, he was a fan of, of the show, 
and he was a massive uh, coke head, and uh, he was coked up and would come in and do the show because he didn't want to go to sleep. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you ever spent time with coke heads, but every, I uh, tell you the truth, I never did cocaine. Beer was mine and Jack did. You sold a lot of Budweiser. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Back when women yeah. had vaginas, you were selling yes, Budweiser. I, uh, well, we were sponsored by Budweiser. So yeah, I, I didn't do coke. I couldn't afford anything, especially in college. I'm not going to put that up my nose. I was eating pot pies. That wasn't my, yeah. But Chris could shovel through the coke, and I never did that with him. But I, I think the, the thing that... The thing that my father made thirty thousand dollars a year making cabinets. I don't know if your dad was big money. I come from nothing, and uh, to see the amount of um, abuse and the amount that he didn't care, and I, I, God gave him this great gift, and people admire him. And I just saw a guy that just wasted, just wasted everything. And on what? On what? And he was a drug addict, and he would break out of the rehab and come see me, but. To, you know, and I mean mountain size, scarface size piles of cocaine, but my, my memory is reading with him, listen to this guys, this is really something actually, uh, reading uh, Oliver Stone's script, Fatty Arbuckle. Yeah. He had been cast as Fatty Arbuckle. That, uh, that was a silent film star that was accused of having sex with a woman and using a wine bottle and she bled to death from the vagina and this number one star on earth was ruined and anyway the script is incredible Chris Farley serious role do you think I can do it I said yeah Chris you can do it and then he had Shrek and they had three movies ready to go and if you look at Shrek and you see Shrek that was written for Chris Farley it's a Chris Farley character and of course then he dies and it was too depressing so they made it Mike Myers doing what I think is the stupid Scottish voice but Chris had so much stuff going but he'd rather you know sleep with $20 Horrors and do cocaine. What a waste. I didn't know about the Shrek thing. All right, let's yeah. play this. Watch Shrek. It's, it is Chris Farley. Hope we don't show too much of this. Hey, Chris. Mm -hmm. Spill a little coffee, did you? Yeah, I spilled some coffee on my titty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how are you? Good to see you. Chris Farley in the building! Woo! Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Anyway, it goes on from there. But we did over 100 hours. And he, he one time called me up and we took over the overnight show. These are radio shows. These are these radio stories that we love to tell these things. But we took over the overnight show, which was automated. I think it was Dr. Drew and uh, Love Lines. And we took over the overnights and we got in trouble. Imagine. Chris Farley taking calls, the phones were exploding, and we had love lines scheduled. The format, you remember the stupid format? You remember the, for the stupid cards we had to read? Yeah. Did you hate all that stuff? Did you like promoting the Brandmeyer show on those little cards? <laughs> we didn't do any of that. No, I, we, I, we had no cards. Hey, don't forget coming up, uh, Chris Payne. Who no, gives a I, shit? I never, you know, I was telling somebody, House of Payne we used to have to take transmitter readings I never took a transmitter reading and wrote it down in my life. I hated radio for the I most part. I understood it. I, I just... He, they, I got a talk. question. Yes. Somebody, when was the last time you pooped your pants? You mean today? Exactly. Yeah. It is amazing. You know, you hear these old guys tell them, and I never want to... But you hear the old guys tell those jokes about, you know, you don't... You don't pass up an opportunity when you get to a certain age, and I'm there. Good. I'm there. Oh, there's a toilet. I better go now. Now, just happened wear, before I came here. Yes. Do you wear boxers or briefs? Well, I go commando. I go commando, ladies. <laughs> they go commando too. And, 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 and Kevin, what about you? Boxers or briefs? Depends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there you go. Not those two guys. Although, you know what? Those are. <laughs> although. Those are really fun. If you go like, on that line, I, you go to a concert and wear an adult diaper. Man. It's wonderful. It's, it's great. So you t see Taylor Swift. You don't have to. I'm fine. Keep singing. <laughs> you also. I was talking to you, and I we were talking, and I said we were talking about dating and his wife, and I've been married. He's been married. I said, Do you remember the first time you lost your virginity? 
and you said it was a sibling or something. We were all so excited with my no, sister. No, you said it was a cousin or something. Oh, we were all very excited. Because you're from years Missouri. She was much older, but we were all excited when, when after 10 years of trying, my sister got pregnant. But then they, no, it was ruined because it was me. Yes, Didn't thank you. Did you say you went out and you dated your cousin? No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm oh. kidding. I, I did see a, um, I did look at a prostitution thing in a magazine when I was in Atlantic City, and I did see a cousin. That is a true story, but that's not that okay. interesting. Yeah. Right. Where, when, how old were you when you lost your virginity? You know what, honest to God, I was uh, in college with Deb, and oh. she's the only one. All right, I got uh, some extra. That's really depressing. That's very impressive. It is. <laughs> it's, you know, she'll look at you like she that's sees me looking at something. What are you looking at? How, how do you know if it's, I mean, how do you know you have nothing to compare with? Was she a virgin? Well, eh, let's move on. Next question. <laughs> yes. She was a whore! I, oh, no. Oh. Yes. I got some texts from people and some, from, good, from the good. audience here. I got one here. Let's see. This is from Man Cow. Uh, you have been politically outspoken, but how do you feel? Things are going now from Barbie Capone. Barbie, are you here? Oh, there she is right there. Oh. From Barbie to what? Now? That's Barbie right there. Wow. 20 people. This is great. <laughs> Now I don't feel so bad about just being shitty. I didn't hey. know that there was before. <laughs> not you, me, me. Uh, do you guys want to hear my thoughts on politics or not? Yeah. Free bird. Free bird. <laughs> Did we have a great moment with Billy Corgan? We're doing a documentary about um, Kevin and, and, and Broken Mary. And I call Billy Corgan and he goes, no, I'm not gonna help. I hate Kevin Matthews. And they're filming. He's down in his basement. And literally, he gets his phone out, and he's on speaker to Billy Corrigan. And you take it over. No, he says, my mom my mom passed away. I'm going to sing Ava Door. And all of a sudden, I hear, free bird. He goes, I hate Ke Kevin Matthews ruined a lot of shows. Does you guys know that Kevin Matthews invented that? Yeah. Right. He covered that. Yeah, wow. But the thing is. Wow. Why does he hate me? It wasn't my I, I, I see didn't you tell a, uh, that's great. a listener to yell Freebird at his mom's funeral. That's no, it wasn't his mom's funeral, it was a concert, but he was dedicating it. Anyway, oh. what, what's, what's the rest of, oh, Bar Barbie. Um, okay, so we'll do it quick. Uh, I, I have people very angry at me, why aren't you on talking about whatever. My, one of my last meetings was you can't question, and I don't, I, it doesn't matter if you're left wing or right wing, by the way. I, I believe in free speech. I've got a, a carved in my flesh. And we should be able to discuss these things. And in college, we should be able to debate and question. And that's what America is. And we can laugh at our leaders. And now if you do that, you get, yes. Now if you do that, you get, you get banned. I am the most shadow banned person on the internet, according to the head of Yelp told me this. But, but um, you know, I believe in free speech. So they said to me, you can't, you can't um, question the election. You must promote the vaccine. We don't want you to mention Jesus Christ. You can say church. I said, stop right there. I'm not interested. Uh, I think we're, you know, we're waiting for something to happen. The other shoe's gonna fall. The pendulum's gonna swing back. It isn't gonna swing back. And I now live in the monastery of my, of my mind. I don't care about the NFL. I don't care about any of their stupid shit. I don't want their poison in my veins. I don't want to watch their propaganda. I've been behind the scenes at the Fox News Channel for seven years. I have the highest rated segment in the morning. And you can, you can turn to your maiden dog, he's full of shit, and that's fine. Uh, everything I predicted on my show, everything, sorry Kevin, has come true. And, oh, he doesn't know. So where we're headed is biological IDs, forced inoculations, cashless society, a closed border, and uh, 15 mile cities. That's where we're headed. So you can fight or you can die. And I had Ron and Will back me up on this. We had uh, the, the, the cops calling me, saying they're tearing down all the statues, man cow. Uh, the, the, the Columbus statues, do you remember this? And, and I called all the Italian leaders and all these tough Italian guys that I had known my whole time in Chicago. Yeah, they should try that shit in Chicago. And we're tired, it's 10 o'clock at night, I don't, and they took all the statues down. I couldn't get anybody to go out and stand with me. So everybody's big talk, everybody's gonna fight, everybody's, 
and when I went out to uh, when I, when they were going to burn Highland Park, and I said, a, a, a pa a, you know, Patriots, go stand and save Highland Park. And I got quite a few people out there. This story's almost over. Hang on, just one second. I know it's, I know it's tedious. I just want to make one point. And I said, Patriots, go out there. And I got a call from the newspaper. You're going to apologize an hour later. For what? Patriot is a racist word. I never knew that in my life. I did an open the schools uh, uh, rally. We had uh, scientists there and everything. Are you guys interested in this? Yeah. I'm almost, it's almost over. And I said, oh, you know, uh, um, uh, Look at this good looking crowd. It was a north side, north side. Look at this good looking north side crowd. Not like the south side. North, south, Chicago, it's Kevin, you and I make jokes about that for our entire careers, right? You guys are aware, south side, north side, all this. I get a call from the newspaper, there's a movement online. Well, that's racist because the south side, do you know why that's racist? No. Black people live on the south side of Chicago. So that's racist. So everything is, everything is, Everything is so topsy-turvy crazy. Yes, you loved our shows. We couldn't do it. I couldn't say manhole cover, that was sexist. I couldn't say Pequod's was the um, uh, mecca of pizza. That's offensive to Muslims. It, it never ends. And we are being pushed further and further back, like I said, to the monastery of our minds. So what you heard, you'll never hear again. And podcasts, I don't know. I don't think you get to be that unless you're controlled. I, I, I don't like Andrew Tate. I like, uh, Pete, what's his name, Peters, Peterson, whatever. I think he's fine. Ben Shapiro, I think, is a complete government plant. I don't believe him at all. And, and there you go. So when you hear somebody on, on the radio and they're angry and they're, it can't be true. It can't be real. You can't get there and get on WLS and say some truth. It doesn't happen. Uh,